Hi everyone, I'm Paulette Morrissey from Tulip Square and today we're going to make bowl cozies. Um, you can find videos for bowl cozies all over the internet and all over YouTube so we thought since everybody else has a bowl cozy video, why don't we? So we're going to make bowl cozies today. Let's go get busy. Okay, here we go. We're going to make some simple little bowl cozies. Everybody has seen these and a lot of people already know how to make them, but it doesn't hurt to show you one more time just in case you haven't seen how to make them and you're not quite sure how to do it. So let's get started. For each bowl of cozy you're going to need two 10 inch pieces of fabric. They can be the same fabric, they can be different. You're going to have one for the outside and one for the inside, but it's reversible so um, make them cute. You're also going to need two pieces of batting, same size, 10 inch squares for the batting and 10 inch squares for the fabric. And line them up real nice. Get them all lined up perfectly nice. So first of all, you put your batting, 100% nice thin cotton batting, one piece with each piece of fabric. And then we're just going to sew diagonally across here and across this way on each of these pieces. So let's do that now. If you have a hard time following a line like this, it doesn't hurt to draw it on there. Um, take a ruler <laughs> and lay it on there, <laughs> preferably one that's long enough to go to the end. But anyway, you can lay it on there and draw a line if you want. Um, you can also fold it diagonally and crease it, and that might be enough of a line for you also, like so. But however you do it, just make your diagonal seams. That's the amount of quilting we're doing on these pieces. That's your free motion quilting. <laughs> okay, so you're going to take one piece and you're going to fold it in half. Nice and neatly. Line up your corners nicely. I see we missed cutting off a thread here. I hate loose threads, don't you? Okay, cut that off. Flatten this out nicely. Okay, then what you're going to do is measure down two inches this way along that fold and just put a little mark there and one inch up from that fold and put a little mark there. And then, whoops, draw a little line between those two and then do the same thing on this side. Make sure that your fabric under here is not puckered up or anything, that it's nice and smooth. And then go one inch from the fold and two inches along the fold. And then mark a line, like so. That's your little darts. And then we're going to sew those two little darts. I like to back tack at the end that's at the bottom of the bowl, the inside of the bowl, because it doesn't get caught by any more threading, stitching, and the other end does because it gets caught when you sew the outside seams and everything, but this end doesn't get caught anywhere, so I do like to do a little back tacking right there. And then we sew the other little dart. Then what you do is you take this piece, it's already got couple little curvy things in it for your bowl. You're going to fold it the other way. You open it out that way and fold it the opposite way that you had just had it folded. Get your, your corners down nice and even. And if it helps, whoops, clip these or pin these to keep them where they belong. And then you're going to mark and make darts the same way along these two folds, but make sure you go in there and make sure that your fabric isn't buckled over. Sometimes it kind of gets thick in there, makes a little rip ripple. So then I'm going to go
what you have is this little shape. So what you're going to do is do that same thing with your second piece. You're going to fold it in half. For those of you who are wondering, I'm using a, a Husqvarna Viking Sapphire 930 sewing machine for this project. I like to have a variety of sewing machines around so I can see which ones I like and don't like. This is one of my favorites. Okay. First of all, let's cut off our seam allowances. We don't need all this extra bulk in there. we got to cut off all these. <coughs> Make a nice quarter inch, leave a nice quarter inch seam allowance. Get rid of all that bulk. Do the same with the other piece. Uh, try not to make the mistake of using some of your real, real thick bulky batting on this because by the time you get through sewing through all these layers and you've got two layers of batting and two layers of fabric and then you get to some of these seams, you're going to have eight layers and it gets a little thick for your sewing machine. So keep it the, the thinner batting works better. Okay. And cotton works better. Especially if you ever plan on putting these in the microwave, make sure, 100% sure, that you're using cotton because you don't want any sparks flying in the microwave or things starting on fire because it's not cotton. So be careful about that. Now I've got these two lined up with each other and I'm just going to put a few clips in so they all stay right where I want them. So now what we're going to do is we're going to sew all the way around the outside edge but I'm going to leave one little section open so I can turn it to the right side. So I'm going to start right here by this first dart and I'm going to sew around. Um, just a nice uh, a little more than a quarter of an inch, I would say. It doesn't have to be a whole half inch, but a, a very, a very generous quarter inch. I'm going to back tack here a little bit, and when you come to these, these seams here, push this one down and this one up so they're in opposite directions when you sew them. So they're not both going one this way or this way. There's one in each direction. Which direction doesn't matter, but just so one is going each way. Reduces the bulk a little bit. There. Now, I'm going to cut that thread off, and I'm going to cut this thread off. Now I'm just going to cut off all of these corners and get rid of some more bulk. Be careful not to cut your threads right in the corner. And we got that done. Now the fun part is we're going to take this thing full of layers of batting and we're going to turn it right side out. So just start pushing it through your little opening here. And there we have our little bowl of cozy. Isn't that beautiful? Thanks for watching. Have a nice day. <laughs> Just kidding. I'm going to flap it around a little bit. Pull out all those corners. Would have been easier to stop right there, wouldn't it? They don't look so hot like that. Sometimes we need a little corner poker thing. If I can find the corners, I can poke them out. Get our corners poked out nicely. This is this part takes longer than anything else, I think. It's getting there, isn't it?
So now what we have to do is we have to sew all the way around the outside edge, just like a little top stitching, and it will also close up this first edge right here. So we're going to tuck this edge in all nice and correctly here. I'm just going to clip it a little bit. Clip there. Clip there. And I'm going to pull out a couple of these little loose threads. Okay. I don't. Now I'm just going to go and top stitch all the way around. I'm about about a quarter of an inch or a little less than that from the edge. And when you get to these sections, these these darted seam areas, you might have to slow down a little bit and help your machine because there's a lot of layers through there. And then if you can, just pivot your needle a little bit so it goes nice and straight along the next line. And what I like to do to finish it off is when I get to where I started my thread, like right here, right here, I just like to go to that point and go back over that beginning part of the seam by about a half an inch. So there's a little bit of an overlap right there, but if you stay in line with your other seam, it's almost invisible and it, it's a nice way to finish it off without having to do anything else. And I can cut those and cut these. And there's your little bowl cozy. All done. You can iron it if you want to. Um, and it's reversible. You can put them either way. Now I made another one and what I did was I did the diagonal stitching afterwards at the end after like these we did that the first thing on them so these are still two complete separate layers like this on this one I did the diagonal stitching at the very end so they're not two separatable layers and I only did it because I want to see which way I like them better there's not a lot of a difference so it's, it's just kind of a personal preference thing. I was just trying it to see which one I liked. But anyway, there you are. This is how you make your bowls. So go out and get a little bit of fabric and go make some bowls. So now you know how to make bowl cozies. Um, remember that these are easy and quick to make. You can use the layer cakes, which are 10 inch squares, or you can use fat quarters and you can get a couple out of a fat quarter. You can also make them a little bit smaller or a little bit bigger. And I'll probably try that at some point just to see what kind of results we get but but in the meantime make some of these they're good for gifts they're good for yourself remember they're good for hot things or cold things they're good for soup chili is awesome in one of these um, cereal ice cream and even my grandkids used to like these just to put little snacks in and carry them around because you can't break them when you drop them and throw cheerios all over the floor so that's it go make some bowl covers or also even bowl cozies <laughs> And if you like this video, hit the subscribe button below and like us. If you prefer to learn how to make the bowl cozies at a slightly slower pace, instead of watching our video and rewinding it over and over, you can go to our website and check out our blog posts on making the bowl cozies. We'll have plenty of photographs and step-by-step -step instructions and you can read it at your own pace. And the description is, it's in the description right below here, in the description, <laughs> there's a link. So check it out. And have a good day. Bye-bye.